when we thought about where to do this event, there really was one place that we thought that could really hold the, the breath and the intellectual fervor that this needed. We immediately reached out to Director Felton Thomas, somebody who knows libraries, somebody who traveled to Beit Shem, Israel, to understand how libraries work in that beautiful city and how to apply some of those lessons here and to share his wisdom as well. He's someone who isn't originally from Cleveland, but he's been here so deeply and so passionately that we call him one of our own. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason that we're here tonight, the person who helped make this all happen, Director Felton Thomas. He was walking down from, from Hyman with two bags in his hands and started talking to me about these crazy ideas he had of having a conference for the sister cities. And after he just sat there with these two bags in his hands going on, I was just like, yes, I'm going to do it, Joe. Just stop and walk away. Go. <laughs> uh, that's Joe. <laughs> so, I want to begin um, by welcoming you all to the Cleveland Public Library, uh, the People's University. I want to kind of, I, I had a, a kind of a longer speech, which I'm not going to do here, but I wanted to tell a couple of stories that I think really um, speak to why we're here today. I was recently, I was in um, Barcelona for the um, International Federation of Libraries Conference. And so we had librarians from over a hundred countries to meet to, to talk about libraries. And so a speaker got up, and the speaker was from New Zealand, and he started talking, and he was going and going, and he was quite humorous, and I, I enjoyed him. And I looked around, and everybody did, just seemed upset. And I, I didn't really understand it until about halfway through the, pro, uh, the program, someone stood up and says, you're talking too fast, mm -hmm. right? And he, he continued on and, and he tried to slow himself down, but then finally the, the afterwards, after everything was done, I thought he was hilarious, but the crowd gave him a rather lackluster kind of uh, uh, you know, applause. And so afterwards I started talking to people and they said, look, we're really smart people. English is our second, third, and sometimes fourth language that we speak. But you have to understand that you should be respectful of us enough to speak in a manner where you speak slow enough so that we can go with you, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to speak slow enough so that I walk with you along this journey on, this, on my presentation today. So um, we're very happy to have you here. Um, I want to thank uh, so many folks, especially our friends at Global Cleveland, Mr. Joe Semperman being one of them. Um, and I want to especially thank uh, our mayor, Frank D. Jackson, the Honorable Mayor of Cleveland, and Chief Bowder McCall for all they have done to be supportive of the Cleveland Public Library and all that they have done to continue to do for internationalism in the city of Cleveland. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize our own library staff who have worked tirelessly to prepare for this arrival. Um, they've done some great work, so please give our library staff their work. <laughs> so your presence is energizing and inspiring to us. This year marks our 150th anniversary. Thank you, Katie. Someone got it at the pause. <laughs> that may be, seem young to some of you and some of your cultures, but personally, I don't think we look a day past 100. Now, we're very fortunate to have been able to serve the greater Cleveland community for the last 150 years. And we're taking this year to celebrate with our community, but also to prepare for our future. As our 150th anniversary tagline states, we are open for discovery. In between your sessions, we hope you take the opportunity to discover the Cleveland Public Library. You can tro uh, travel the globe with our traditional and modern puppets over in the main building. You'll see that, that um, exhibit the world of puppetry. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to get a great picture with Oscar the Grouch over next door. And that is not Joe Simperman, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> You can visit our International Languages Department with books and materials in more than 45 different languages. Um, for those who want to travel to other places, we have passport services on our first floor. 
Um, right across the hall, when you're here, you will have an opportunity to go to our Tech Central and visit our innovative technology and learning center with laser engravers, vinyl cutters, 3D printers, and a heat press. And of course, we have a sports research center in the city of Cleveland. Okay. Somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say that as someone who always wears Cleveland gear everywhere I go across the country and across the world. And people many times put their hands on my shoulder with this <laughs> and say, we feel for you. <laughs> we have a preservation lab in our digital public library, and we maintain the world's largest collection of materials on the game of chess in the world. So we call ourselves the People's University. This is because we just aren't any university. Our mission is to be the center of learning for a diverse and inclusive community. We are open to everyone. At our, at our university, we don't care about grades. We don't require standardization tests. We don't require letters of recommendation. And we don't charge tuition. We are the People's University. So I want to tell you a story. Um, and this story really is based off of the Hungarian poppy seed roll. So I don't know how many of you had a chance to either taste or see a Hungarian poppy seed roll, but they're very nice, very good. The year is 1918. The need in the community is citizenship classes for tens of thousands of immigrants arriving in Cleveland. One library branch report at that time states that 76% of the children they are working with are foreign born. At our St. Clair branch, 50 to 60 men meet each Friday for citizenship classes sponsored by the Board of Ed. During this period, our Carnegie West branch has a strong parent program of Americanization classes taught by a woman, a librarian named Helen Horvath. Mrs. Helen Horvath's class for immigrant mothers, primarily from Hungary, first met two afternoons a week, then three afternoons a week, what made Mrs. Horvath's class unique was not how often the class met, but her goals for the class. She wanted to break down barriers and connections between her students and the community around her. Her students are new immigrants to the Ohio City neighborhood on the near west side of Cleveland. Their American neighbors were not happy to have these immigrants moving into the neighborhood. Sounds eerily familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Horvath recognizes that her students can also be teachers. While they had a lot to learn about their new country, the language, the customs, they also had something to share. So Mrs. Horvath invited the American neighbors to a special program where the Hungarian women exhibited their handiwork, such as embroidery. At another program, the Hungarian women shared their old country baking, including poppy seed rolls. This creativity helped to build bridges between the cultures and create greater understanding between the neighbors while celebrating the unique cultural gifts her students had to share. This dialogue, this work we have, are doing today is our effort to understand each other. The sharing of each other's cultures, each other's unique, gift, each other's unique gifts is something that we desperately needed in 19 and it's something we desperately need in 2019. Oh, thank you, Joe. Hey, Joe gave me an amen from the choir. <laughs> As we set our course for the next 150 years, we want to maintain our history of openness here at the Cleveland Public Library, our history of innovative and progressive ways to help great Cleveland leaders of all cultures. Today, we are a part of this program because like Mrs. Horvath, we want to bridge those cultural divides. We thank you for joining us on this journey together. This is the first of uh, hopefully many years where we started to work on this. Um, but we appreciate you deciding to be the inaugural class of um, what we hope will be a journey toward a bridging of cultures. So thank you very much for joining us here at the Public Library. <laughs>